All right, shalom, 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 y'all. Um, and we are continuing on this, um, I guess you could call it this self-development um, series we've been on. Um, and what I'm going to be talking about today is self-awareness. We're going to kind of dig in on self-awareness. And when I, when I talk about self-awareness... We, I would like to come from a standpoint of just overall kind of self-development. And um, we're going to really be hitting hard why you need to examine yourself. Why everything hinges on you examining yourself. That's where everything starts at. And um, because people don't get this key concept, they, you know, they go through life wrestling with things. You, you cannot progress and develop spiritually without self-examination. And uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to um, start it off with some scriptures. And the first one is one you've heard me read before, and that's 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. So you have to look at yourself. Uh, it says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And that is in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Okay? Um you have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And because a lot of people aren't, you know, they're not even aware of the concept of looking at what they think, what they feel. Um, you know, they don't realize that you don't have to just function off pure impulse. You can actually pay attention to the thoughts and the feelings and the behaviors that are, that are coming up in you. Um, and because people are just completely unaware of this concept, that they are stunted in their spiritual development and growth. They're just... And you see a, a lot of people, um, they just have no idea. They're just completely oblivious to anything that they're doing that is contrary to the word. It, it, it's a type of spiritual blindness. You know what I'm saying? Um, where you can't see yourself. And this is... This is like the gateway. This is the only route to self-development, to, to righteousness. You know what I'm saying? Is you have to um, be able to examine yourself. Uh, you know, the other verse I read all the time, uh, bringing into captivity any thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of Yah. You're not going to be able to do this unless you've, cultivated the ability to pay attention to the thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and things like that, that come up in you. And I, I can tell you, like all the way up to about the age of 26, when I got on this journey, I was, I, it, I, I wasn't even aware that this was even a thing, that you can pay attention to your thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, pay attention to your behaviors and stuff. I get people saying, hey, don't do that. Why you keep doing this, this, that? You know, my whole life all the way up to then. And to a degree, I would kind of pay attention to it. But I was just so unaware and I was just so closed off. I didn't really give it any, any real attention. And... You know, the direct, this is the rudder of your ship in life is being able to be aware of where you're going, what you're doing. 
So I wrote here, a lot of people are too busy obeying the flesh. So they're too busy obeying the flesh and being obedient to the flesh is carnal lust and nature and everything like that. So they're so busy obeying it and, and trying to meet all the demands of the flesh that they they never do examine their flesh. They never take a step back and look and hey, is is this impulse and this thing that I'm, that's so ingrained in me that I'm so used to doing, does this line up with the word? You know, they're not asking these types of questions. Um so one of the things you know, I talked about was knowing yourself. And, you know, knowing yourself basically refers to understanding your internal world. Again, not only are people like clueless about it, like that, they, they don't, they didn't even know there was an internal world. And, and when we talk about internal world, um, well, we're talking about thoughts, uh, values, emotions, strengths, weaknesses, all this stuff like that. Again, people are just oblivious to this. And this drives, like when, you, when you're dealing with somebody, or maybe it's yourself, and the way this will appear to you, if it's operating in you, is just you'll see patterns in your life. And the reason you're going to see these patterns is because the pain and the difficulty and the heartache and all that is going to grab your attention and cause you to notice that, hey, you know, the, literally the first step in becoming aware of this internal world and these things that are operating in your feelings, emotions, thoughts deep down in you the first sign is going to be pain and difficulties in certain areas of your life. You know, certain people saying, hey, you're this, you're this, you're this, over and over again, but you kind of shut off or have some type of response to it, and you're not receiving it. You know what I'm saying? So, literally, that that's... Um, kind of a key indicator of, hey, this is where I need to, if I am going to embark on this journey into this inner world, the, the thoughts, feelings, emotions, and what type of spirit, trying to discern what type of spirit you're operating in and everything like that. If you're going to step one on that journey, it's just literally, you can look externally in your life and see certain patterns certain things that just keep happening. And and like somebody might have, well, what do you mean? I mean, it could be a myriad of things. It, it, it could have to do with relationships. It could have to do with, like with me, it, it was how like at work, certain ways, uh, I, I, certain things I would miss at work, like working on airplane engines, certain things I would miss. Um, it would also have to do with, uh, um, what's another area? Well, one area that a lot of y'all probably heard me talk about before is, uh, how I would deal with authority and people over me, you know, it's, I mean, and we have to understand these painful areas that keep coming up, they're designed for something, the most I designed these for something to get your attention. It's like a check engine light in your car to get your attention, let you know, hey, there's something wrong in this area. You need to start paying attention to it. You see what I'm saying? All right. So let, let's see what else we got here. Um, getting you know, the things you need to get to know about yourself are going to be your thoughts. Uh, what are your thought patterns? Are you generally, you know, how, how are you, how are you generally, are you optimistic? Are you pessimistic? Emotions, how do you identify and understand your feelings? 
And, and w one of the big areas, like some people don't even realize they're mad. They're just because they're so inside what's going on in them. So they don't even recognize that they're mad. And as simple as it sounds, I mean, when when you're flooded with these emotions, literally just sitting there and labeling, hey, or categorizing it, hey, I'm upset. Hey, I'm anxious. Hey, I'm sad, you know, or whatever it is. Literally, that's a big step there. Because then you can start asking questions and dive, digging deeper. Hey, what am I upset about? What am I mad about? You see what I'm saying? But all this, all these behaviors are driven from a lack of knowing ourselves, a lack of self-awareness, um, being selfish, self-centered, and self-absorbed is another one. What, the, the way that breaks down is... You, you're so locked in and identified with your flesh and with your carnal nature, you have no idea that you're being selfish. It just is, I mean, it, you're just completely oblivious to it. Okay, now check this out to drive that home. Understanding your impact, okay? This is about how you affect the world around you. So this is another thing that when you're practicing introspection, when, when you're looking within yourself, when, when you're doing self-examination, this is one of the things that are going to develop when you become a aware of what's operating in you so so you what you're doing is broadening your scope of what you're able to see a lot of people walk around like this and what you need to do is be like this when it comes to being able to discern and look within and see what's going on inside you and examining examining yourself so um, this is another big part it is about recognizing how you affect the world around you. A lot of people, again, when, when you're self-centered, self-focused, self-driven, self-absorbed, and you're all about self, like that's the only way you see the world is, hey, they, what people could do for you is, is very, a very self-centered mindset. And it's, it's at the highest level of unawareness <laughs> when you're unaware of how what you're doing is affecting people. And that's what it's saying here. Self-perception, public perception. How do you see yourself compared to how others see you? It says impact of emotions. How do you how do your emotions influence your behavior and interactions with others? Nonverbal communication. Are you aware of your body language and how it might convey something different uh, than your words? Um, and it, here's the essence of what we're talking about is, in essence, uh, self Hold on one sec. So here, here's how they broke it down. Um, it says, in essence, self-awareness is a continual process of learning about yourself and how you function in the world. And like I said, this thing, I, I have seen it, man. This thing is alien to a lot of people. A lot of people, they're just, you bring this up, they're, they're just not even going to consider it self-examining themselves but guess what when you read through the word the whole the whole entire word is literally focused on this <laughs> and what, what a lot of people do is because they're so blocked off to looking at themselves 
and and not I'm not talking about on a surface level because a lot of people who are the the people to a, a key identifier are people who are blocked off to looking at themselves are people who um, I guess you call them uh, people with a religious spirit where all the surface level stuff, all the easy surface level visual stuff, they want to hold you to the letter of the law on. But the weightier matters, <laughs> they, you know, they're not talking about it. You see what I'm saying? So, like loving your brother as you love yourself. Well, people who don't have, who don't know themselves, if you don't even know who you are <laughs> inside, how are you, how can you love yourself if you don't even know you? You see what I'm saying? But as you get to know yourself, you begin to love yourself and then you're able to love your brother. And I'm telling you, this is a heavy, like to some people, hopefully I'm cracking through, but I know, man, to some people it's literally like I'm speaking a different language and it is literally like trying to teach, um, uh, like I said, a fish how to ride a bike. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just a concept that is going to really get wrestled with. And But with the most high, all things are possible. So going to, the, going, to, going to Yah, going to Jesus, praying for your eyes to be open to him to deal with your heart. That's going to be a key step. To bring in the light in those in those dark areas th that a lot of people operate in unconsciously. Okay, uh, let's see what else I wrote here. Self examination is the act of closely inspecting your thoughts, behaviors, and motivations. Okay, now that's good. You're closely examining this stuff. And this is how you work your salvation out with fear and trembling. If you don't know what type of sin, what type of stuff is operating in you, how are you going to work it out? Um, there's that prayer in Psalms where he says, cleanse me, O Yah, from secret sin. Cleanse me from things I'm not even aware of that are going on. Like there's a lot of deep stuff in there. But we do we need to turn our focus inward and not be so focused outwardly at what other people are doing, things we can't affect anyway. Okay? Um, let's see. So here some some goals of growth and development need to be the primary goal is to increase your awareness. Like make sure you understand what's going on in you and around you. And I'm telling you what, y what you're going to find is that this is the core of all the issues you have going on in your life. And this is what the word is seeking to purge out of you. Any of these deep rooted issues that, you know, you might be operating in, you know what I'm saying? But what, what you find is that this, this is at the root of everybody's issues. It's a lack of self-awareness, like a lack of, you just don't know yourself. And people see stuff in you. And a lot of people, this is what happens. This is what happened with me in my life. A lot of people, I was like, man, what is up with me? And guess what? Nobody would tell me. Because people see, a lot of people like, man, people be so jacked up. And they be so gone and so out of touch with themselves. Anybody with a little bit of wisdom knows, hey, it ain't even worth mentioning. It's better if I just avoid it. And guess what? The word tells you to do that anyway. That's what the word tells you to do. You know what I'm saying? It tells you to <laughs> remove yourself from brothers who walk disorderly or sisters who walk disorderly. Let me get the verse. All right, so the verse is uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6. It says, Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. Uh, another one is Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. It says, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. And again, a wise person, it, as you read through here, you read through the book of Proverbs, that literally that's a book of wisdom. And that book, I mean, it breaks the law down to the granular level. Um, it's going to give you wisdom. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to show you, it's going to give you a template to measure yourself by when you begin to look and examine yourself. You have something to compare it to. You compare it to the book of Proverbs, what's in there. And uh, in doing that, you're going to gain wisdom. And like I said, Proverbs breaks down what wisdom is. It also breaks down what a fool is. And it's basically somebody who doesn't want to change. Somebody who is not in touch with themselves. They're just functioning through their carnal nature, through their flesh, through their impulses and emotions, and they're not evaluating it or, or trying to, um, you know, bring it into subjection, bring it in line with the word. So the obstacle becomes the way. Whatever, whatever that obstacle is, and how, like I said earlier, how are you going to know what that obstacle is? It's going to be that problem area in your life. And, and it becomes the path. It becomes the way. And it, when, when I say it becomes the way, that is where you need to begin focusing at. That's the most high trying to, uh, set, setting off a check engine light for you to, Go look at that particular area of the engine. If you got a low oil light that comes on, you know you need to pull over and check the oil level. Hey, guess what? The oil level's low. Look under the car. Is it leaking? How bad is the leak? How much oil am I going to need to get? You got to begin dealing with the problem head on. No, no, you're not going to be able to keep driving down the street. You're going to have to take a detour. You're going to have to pull off the side of the road and go check this thing pull over in a safe place so because a lot of people like to just be go 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 and just keep being me and put my head down and keep pushing forward and you got check engine lights on now and if you don't check that oil eventually that engine gonna seize up and you're gonna be on the side of the road well it's the same thing spiritually a lot of people because they have neglected getting to know themselves for so long, the, the problems, the, the issues that they've been neglecting to pay any attention to are just getting worse and worse and worse. And a lot of times they'll affect people around you and everything like this. And you just won't pull over and check that oil level. <laughs> you won't. Pull over and check that oil level. Um, so just really wanted to put that out there for y'all. Um, hopefully this uh, helps you. Like I said, we got a whole playlist of videos about this. Definitely check them out. I'm Michael Israel. Shalom.